Forest Rangers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories? Not a ranger but I was out camping with my dog one night in or along the Mogollon Rim of Arizona. It was dark and we were sitting around the campfire when we hear something behind a bush close to our camp. Instead of my dog barking at it. He begins to whimper. I didn't think nothing of it and just tended to the fire. After a couple of minutes we were some more noises from a different bush. This time my dog gets up and goes over to the tent and scratches the door because he wants to go in. I toss a couple of rocks in the direction I heard the noise and nothing happened. I'm spooked now so I toss a couple of pieces of wood on the fire and climb into my tent with my dog hoping that the light from the fire would keep whatever was out there away. We eventually fall asleep and luckily had no other disturbances during the night. The next morning. I go out behind the bushes where we had heard the noises and found mountain lion tracks that were circling around our camp. I'm sure glad I didn't go looking at night when I heard the noises. So my dad is a forestry technician and this happened to one of his co-workers. They were up doing some sort of job in the very most northerly part of Ontario. Anyways it was in the middle of the night and she was half asleep and vaguely heard something outside her tent. Then she felt something push against her tent and the zipper slowly open. She opened her eyes and saw the head of a polar bear in her tent. Polar bears are far from the cuddly toys that you see and they are known to be super aggressive and will hunt and eat people. She laid there paralyzed with fear thinking that it was the end and then slowly the bear attracted its head and left. Not me but my dad who was a ranger. He said once he was out in the forest with one other ranger. They had to camp overnight halfway to their destination. Well that night they heard footsteps and a lot of them outside their tent. Then they heard at least 20 people scream get out. Needless to say they got the FCK out and radioed it in. The next morning the cops went out and searched and found four skinned animals pinned to the treats around their campsite. I'm not a ranger but I did used to live near a national forest and when I was in high school I had my mom drive me into the woods so I could take some photos on a trail for a photography assignment. She waited in the car and I headed down the trail. Saying I wouldn't be long. It's actually really pretty and it leads down to a river and you can walk along the edge as it turns around a bend. As I was walking I distinctly remember feeling like I was suddenly in danger and like something was watching me. I was wearing an orange raincoat so I was pretty visible. I didn't have my glasses on but as I looked over the river to the other side of the bank I saw something really tall and grey making its way through the trees. Toward the river. I have never been so scared. I went into survival mode and booked it back up the trail to my mom's car where I told her what happened. It's still one of the freakiest things I've ever experienced. Wish I got a photo but I was a 16 year old. 90 pounds girl and was freaked tf out. Not a ranger. Last year I went camping early springtime with some people at a pretty remote place. Watergans National Park. There wasn't many people around and it was a really nice area. Two days into our camping trip one of my friend's camp chair broke and we went through all our stuff looking for cable ties. We searched tents and the cars but we had no cable ties. So we just left it. That night I woke to my tent shaking slightly so I woke up my boyfriend next to me we opened the tent and it was one of my friends. My friend was in panic saying he couldn't breathe that something was choking him. So we shot up with a torch and shinning it on his neck we found two black cable ties. Tied around his neck. They were tight enough for it to be cutting off some of his airway. After we were able to cut off the cable ties. We went back to sleep. We did not sleep easily that night. The next morning we asked my friend about it like if anything in his tent seemed out of the ordinary. He said when he woke up that night. His tent was open. Not a ranger but I was camping in a remote park in Argentina. There was only one other group in the campground. I made brief small talk with them. I'm not fluent in Spanish. During the night I was woken up and swear I saw someone walking by my tent and shine a flashlight in. I've never had claustrophobia until that moment. I was in a mummy bag because it was pretty cold. Damn near ripped the thing open trying to get out cause I thought I was under siege. Another episode. Winter camping in Minnesota with my dog. I was waiting for my friends to join me. But they were a few hours out. The campsite is a mile or two from the highway. 
An ambulance drove by at like 8pm while I was in my tent taking a nap with Doggo. Right after it goes by a pack of coyotes start howling. I made sure Doggo was on her leader after that. In the past I had let her run around in remote campsites after dark. But not anymore. Not a ranger. But I worked in conservation. I was walking a creek bed with a bunch of loose rocks in it. I had been through it before and we'd seen plenty of artifacts around the site like arrowheads. One day. For some reason. I was walking along and stopped. I turned around and brushed some of the rocks aside under the water. There was an unusual looking tool. Maybe half an inch wide and five inches long. With the tip broken off. Under these loose river pebbles. I got goosebumps immediately and started looking around. I was the only one out on this 16. 000 acre tract. And something stopped me in my tracks and told me to look there. I've had some weird stuff happen but I'm probably the cause of a lot more unexplained sightings. I used to spend a lot of time in the forest near my neighborhood. It's a small strip of trees that's biggest inhabitant is a fox. I got into vulture culture taxidermy about a year ago. I've always been a fan of zoology and being able to look at animals in a different way is incredibly interesting. When I was getting into it the fox in the forest had just had kits and was hunting over time to feed them. I started kind of an exchange where I'd pick up bones and such from around the den and if I found fresh corpses elsewhere I'd leave the meat around the den instead of wasting it. Unfortunately this garnered me the reputation of outcast horrible dead animal lady from most of the kids who liked to play in the forest and noticed me carrying bags of rotting animal parts around. As far as I'm aware none of them actually knew anything about me aside from the rotting meat and the time I accidentally busted through with a bunch of live snakes. So that should pretty well cement their opinion on me. Not a ranger. Shocker. One summer my boyfriend and I drove up and down California and just slept in the back of his truck. One day we went to the Emerald Pools near Lake Tahoe and crashed at a public campground nearby. There was maybe one other person there as well as the campground host. In the middle of the night I woke up and just had a creepy feeling. I sat up and realized that the passenger door of the truck was swung wide open. We had locked ourselves in the bed with the camper shell and you had to unlock it from the inside to get him out. I'm a nervous Nelly as my boyfriend calls it and always made sure doors were closed and locked before bed. I was so creeped out for the rest of the night that I could barely sleep. My dad spoke to a Chinese woman who lived as a forest survey person up in the mountains for the past 30 or so years. This is in Canada about 5 years ago, as an unofficial sort of person the government asked about when looking for forest fires. Any sort of illegal shit. Etc. She says that she spotted multiple Sasquatch and that they are quite intelligent and just don't want to interact with people. Not even the young ones. But if she's out there they're pretty chill about it because she grew up around that area and remembers seeing them from a young age. She had a totally straight look on her face. And my dad said she's one of the most rational people he'd seen out there. He owned a strip of gold claim out that way at the time and she said if he knew what was good to leave that land alone because digging it up would disturb a lot of shti in the area and she wasn't sure it was a good idea. My dad wasn't so sure until he swears. Up and down. He saw one himself. And she said that's the female one and just went inside and left him out there to take the FCK off running. I've got a deep woods story that's been shared in my family for quite a few years. My great uncle was a deep woods kinda guy. In a practice I find a little weird. He would rarely use a tent. Just set up a sleeping bag right on the ground. Since we're from Maine. There aren't too many large predators that really mess with people. There are black bears. But they usually hide from people. So I guess he just didn't feel worried. So. He's out sleeping in the woods. When he feels tiny hands patting his face. Wakes up. Opens his eyes to see a raccoon standing over him. Just feeling his face. So what does my great uncle do? He just goes back to sleep. Alright obligatory not a ranger but here goes. I was in the forest camping out under the lovely forests of Jersey. We set up camp and were all chatting in our tents and left the fire up so we can tell some great scary stories. All was going well until we heard a rustling in a bush textbook scary story stuff. 
We all think it's one of our friends who hasn't come back from the potty break but just as the bush was rustling we see the outline of a person circling our tent. We call out for our friend but random person does not answer and at this point he stops in place. We all start getting freaked out as the person we see from outside could not possibly be our friend due to the height difference. One of the members of the group lies saying that we are armed and kill him. A good minute goes by before we all hear what I can describe as the most shrill scream I have ever heard and do just up and leaves. Creepy part about this is that our friend who was out to the restroom says he heard said scream but saw no one around the camping area or even footprints of where the man should have been. We were also pretty deep into the woods as well so it's not as if anyone who was just passing by could have found us at least not easily. Not a ranger. But here's a good woods story. It's late spring. Heavy rain had flooded the dike and public hunting ground so I get the idea to go fishing in the shallows with my buddy. We have a good time. Didn't catch anything and it's getting dark. So we light a fire to dry off before heading back. As the sunlight is swallowed up we hear something I can only describe as a blood curdling scream coming from the distance. A little girl almost. Frogs. We thought. And kept talking. Twigs snap if. Then again. But much closer. We heard it. Could have been as close as 30 feet at the tree line. We hightail it out of there and laugh it off once we get home. Fast forward 6 years. I'm on lunch break and I'm telling this story to my lead. And he pulls up a video on YouTube and lets me listen. The same scream. He gives me the phone and I see a mountain lion. They make that noise as a final warning. Full stop. I'm a ranger, non-peace officer, and work at a pretty remote desert park. This happened before I got there. But the other rangers I work with were there. They went to do a patrol during summer, our off season, at one of our seldom used campgrounds. On a patrol. Our maintenance ranger found a burnt out car in one of the sites. The desert is a weird place so he just calls the sheriff and waits. Sheriff arrives and it turns out there's a body in the driver's seat. With no arms and no legs. Just a torso and head. Burnt. Sheriffs just marked it as a suicide and removed the vehicle. We are close to Mexico and get a lot illegal drug traffic. So I guess they don't even bother trying to solve those. Super sketchy. Not a ranger but, like probably all the rest of the comments are going to be, I was camping in the woods. Backwards campground with the nearest sign of humanity was a National Guard depot about 5 miles away. It was the week before Labor Day and the campground was completely empty. We were half asleep in our tent when we heard what sounded like a little girl laughing in the distance. It continued for about an hour. Didn't get much sleep that night. Edit. Mystery explained. Apparently it was a bird called a magpie and not a demon girl. This is gonna get buried as I'm late to the party. But I worked for a few months as a park ranger with the Florida Forest Service at my local state forest. The creepiest thing I saw was a poor young man who hung himself on my second week on the job. The unexplainable. Though. Are obviously not as cut and dry. We'd have children's clothes neatly folded and left on the trails. Pairs of shoes in the middle of our dense burn blocks. And just a general sense of eeriness. My first few weeks on the job I was easily spooked but after I got into my groove of spending hours alone in the woods. It took a lot to shake me. When the forest goes silent. Pack up and move along. Not a ranger but my uncle was. He always told the story of when he worked in Montana he was a solid 5-10 miles away from town so pretty much balls deep in the woods. He recalled pulling his ATV on top of a semi big hill that overlooked a valley. In between all the trees there was this clearing he could see through his binoculars. Through them he saw an older lady, 60 plus ish, in black surrounded by a 6-8 wolves. Now. He is a lengthy distance from the woman but he starts yelling and honking and all that and takes off down the hill as fast as he could but when he reached the clearing there was no one there. No wolves. No woman. Only a silver ring with a black stone in the middle. He still has it to this day. No arranger but went hiking with a boyfriend who used to do forest work for the local tribes and was a native himself. So we had been hiking for a good 6 hours with our dog and my BFS 5 year old son making our way back to the car to get home. 
We took a snack break rest for his son when in front of us just slightly down the mountain we noticed a branch that had been hacked up and had the redwood bark shredded. My BF made a comment on it and I agree it was weird as we had stopped there on the way in and it wasn't like that. We continue our snack not and get ready to leave when we notice the branch is no longer hacked or shredded we spend the rest of the hike trying to figure out what the hell was going on. My BF says it was the weirdest and creepiest thing he ever experienced and he was a marine before he worked for the tribe. I'm not a ranger. But I want to share a story when I was in high school climbing a quite high mountain called Merapi in Indonesia. The mountain is around 3000 meters high. I climbed with 20 people. 5 were trained climber and the rest were newbie like me. There were many weird things happened. But the one that happened to me was when I walked down the mountain. We divide the 20 people in 3 groups. I was in 2nd group. We intend to stick together. But because there are some girls that so slow. I and one of my experienced friends tried to run first and left them. The instructor give the permission and off we go. But then my friend said hey. I want to take a shit. You can just go alone. It's not far from here and then okay. It's noon and it's really not that far. And then I left him. But after that I arrived at a place filled with bamboo. The mountain actually is filled with typical rainforest trees. But in this particular area. It filled with bamboos. This area like a circle with diameter 50 meters. But after I'm entering. The way out that I clearly saw is not there. I start to panic. I tried to go back and wait for my friend. But the way in also wasn't there. I running around for about 2 or 3 minutes I hike until somehow the way in appeared again and I just wait for my friend. Not a lot of super creepy stuff in 5 years so far. My favorite story creep wise isn't that creepy once you realize what it actually is versus. Your imagination running wild when walking up. Involves chanting and screaming from like 500 yards outside my park. Think 9 people screaming and crying and one guy shouting about the end in Spanish over the screams. Then you remember the big apostolic church in group camp was really quiet. They had hiked off in the hills to speak in tongues and worship. Actually very considerate. It would have been much more disturbing to the campground had they done it in their sight. It was also far enough off site where it would be weird for me to get involved. Also stopping worship off site. And if it were a crazy cult ritual then that's a good way to die in Diana Jones Temple of Doom style. I chatted with the customers at sites who could hear them and explained it to them. They were relieved generally that all was okay and ultimately the worship stopped around 1045 so it wasn't the most disruptive group so no major problems at the end. A fish and wildlife officer told me that one time they got dispatched to a house on an Indian reservation in northern Canada. They were told that a guy was complaining of a big foot shaking his trailer. They went there and they came upon some elders of the reservation brushing off and hiding tracks with branches. They consider the Bigfoot as a spiritual creature. They have stories from back in the old days of run-ins with them. They are even on old totem poles. I also worked with a guy who reenacted fur trade days at old forts. He would get dressed up in his little Davy Crockett costume and act in front of school kids and such. He knew everything about Canadian history and said that back in the old days Indians talked about creatures that lived in the rivers and they drew pictures to show what they looked like and they drew crocodiles. Like just about everyone here. Not a ranger. But. Grew up next to a big park. As a little kid, 6 to 13, I spent a lot of time exploring in the woods with my friends. One day we discovered the panty tree. It looked more or less like a Christmas tree. But all the ornaments were women's panties. A year or so later a young girl was murdered in a park about 2 miles away. A couple years later it happened again. I don't know if it was related to the panty tree. If the murders were connected to that or to each other. This was in the Pacific Northwest in the 80s. So there was a lot of serial killer stuff going on. Not a park ranger but worked in a forest for a couple of years. I think it was when I was volunteering before I was given a job my boss. Another volunteer and I were out in a more groomed part of the forest for public use. There had been a school group earlier and one of us notices a hoodie on one of the benches. I would have ignored it but my boss said we should take it with us. 
Someone might come back for it. We go over. Boss picks it up looked at the outside. Some sport team logo. Checks the tag for a name. Maybe a parent wrote one. Nope. Boss says nice shirt. Shame a kid would forget it like this and is checking out the material looking it over then she yells and drops it. What? Look in the sleeve. I pick it up and look in hundreds of spiders. I guess that thing had been there for a while. Explains why it was big for a kid. Creepiest thing that happened to me. Not a ranger. But I am an eagle scout who used to camp a lot for scouting. A lot of the reservations have tons of random semi-feral dogs that just roam and are not aggressive. I dunno. Maybe the rangers have a lot of dogs that they let roam free. Some are more shady than others. And some will come up and let you pet them beg for your food. Also. There are coyotes that you can hear calling out nightly from 2am to about 4am intermittently. Anyways. It was not uncommon to wake up in the middle of the night to what I want to hope was just the dogs sniffing at you from outside of the tent and poking the outside of the tent with their noses. Never found any footprints to show what it was. Probably because the ground was hard and leaves covered all the loose dirt on the ground. Not paranormal. But still unsettling to know that either a random dog or coyote was checking you out in the middle of the woods at night. Not a ranger like most of the posts in this thread. When I was around the age 8 we used to go camping in the forest behind my grandparents house. This was their land and was entirely private property one night we are out there and our oldest cousin is watching the fire and the second oldest is showing us how to pitch a tent when we hear a loud crack of a stick. We turned around to see a man in his 30s standing there 20 meters away from us he was wearing ripped up clothing and a blue ball cap that was missing the rim. My cousin pulled out his pocket knife and the guy ran away. To this day I still don't know who it was but this man was obviously not in his right mind. Later that night I woke up to a person walking around the tent I began to panic and grabbed my cousin's knife and held onto it for dear life. I stayed quiet for what felt like forever until finally the person went away. I later asked my parents if they had gone out to check on us but they all said no. I have literally no clue who it was and probably never will. My guess was he was homeless and was deciding to camp in the forest. Not a ranger, thankfully. Who wants to be alone in woods? Comma but as a kid growing up in former Iroquois nation's country. I attended a girl scout horse ranch that was haunted. Stayed there twice. I could seriously write a book about that place. The first time. I stuck it out the whole week. The next summer. My friend and I were fed up with the anxiety. We called and asked parents to get us out. Nobody was willing to walk the path to the line of cabins. People heard wagons. Piano music. And men yelling and shouting. In an all female camp. Looking back. I feel like it was one of those thin veil areas. And we were stepping into another time. Who knows. Not a ranger but my boyfriend at the time and I were hiking up in the Rockies. We came across what looked like a small silo. The door on it had a pad lock but was unlocked. Like it had been busted off. We were curious what it was inside of it because it was weird we came upon anything at all. We weren't on a trail and were way I I I up there. My boyfriend at the time opened it up and inside was what looked like a torture chamber. Like full on chair with restraints and chains coming from the ceiling. There was a trap door on the floor and no way were we opening it. We hiked right back to our car and left. Still feel creepy about it. I'm far from a forest ranger. But I was in scouts in grade 7. We were camping in an area that was known to contain larger animals. Mainly bears and cows. We had set up our tents in a U shape. With me and a friend's tent on the outside. During the night. I woke up to a really loud rumbling sound. It sounded as if it was right outside my tent. And scared a shti out of me. I woke up my friend and he just went back to sleep. The sound kept on going. So I opted to check things out. I step outside into the cold and look around. Nothing is there. But the rumbling sound continues. I try to find where the sound is coming from. But it seems to be coming from everywhere. Freaked out. I edged a little bit further away from my tent. And realized the source of the sound. I had been woken up by one of the troop leaders snoring. 
The best thing is that they're 10 to a 6 tenths away from mine. Was, technically, a ranger at Yosemite and passed every day through the gate along the Merced River. One day there was a commotion which caused a slowdown but didn't involve us so we crept by. Just slow enough to hear a man in anguish trying loudly to explain something. It was early summer but the river was still raging from a solid snowpack that year. And we found out later that the guy was trying to take a picture of his wife with a torrent as a backdrop. Apparently he'd kept telling her to back up just a bit further when she disappeared. Us and the firefighting guys were tasked with finding her body, nobody made much of a pretense that she might have survived. She turned up two months later. After the river had settled enough that we'd started swimming in it. Just upstream from our swimming hole. Ugh. My brother has a winter job closing parks. He drives around in a county vehicle and makes sure no one is in the parks before closing the gates. He does this from about 5pm to 8pm and it's pretty dark out. The other day he was closing one of the parks and saw a man hopping through the woods. The man then saw him and crouched down and just watched my brother do his closing duties. My brother left and went on to another park where he found a dead coyote frozen solid standing up as if it were alive. Creepy shit.